What's going on, good people? This is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. I want to thank you so much over the last few weeks. You guys really been rocking with me as you kind of went to Africa with me and, and went on the tour, and, and you got a chance to see some of the things that I saw with my own eyes and our team, and we put together at, at best we could so that you can see what we were doing over there, and it was amazing. Um, we had a great time. Also, I want to thank you because most of you all who are watching, you are some ride or die people, and over the last few months, you've been with me on this success journey as it relates to happiness. Like, we were talking about how to really be happy and not circumstantially happy, but to be neurologically happy so that way you can think on things and change your mood and change your mind and actually be happy about the life you have. Now, this is strategic, that we spent the first part of the year, the latter part of last year, first part of this year, talking about happiness. Why? Because if you're not happy, then you will not enjoy anything else that comes after it. Like, you, you can literally have all the money in the world, but if you don't have joy in your heart, you don't find a reason to smile, you won't enjoy it. How many millionaires, how many successful business people have we seen take their lives all because they were not happy? And so we spent the latter part of last year and the first part of this year helping you to deal with the trauma that sometimes frustration can leave behind. Let us know if that helped, because now that we have given you the tools to make sure that you can think yourself to a happy place. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about something that I know you all want, and if you're ready for it, this is the season to have it. I wanna talk over the next few weeks simply about one word, success. I am 40 years old. I was young and now I'm getting older. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor seed begging for bread, but I do remember <laughs> moments where I didn't have any bread and no seed. I remember 12 years ago, we started this church with five people and our first offering was $796. I remember looking in the audience wondering, is anybody coming beside me? And over the last 12 years, God has taken us from a ministry of five to a following of over 15,000 in a city that I was not born in. Flesh and blood did not reveal it to me. It was my father, which is in heaven. I want to show you the tools and the principles that God has shown me to go from a young man who was working at Taco Bell when he was 16 to having several businesses, a ministry operating in four different places and being blessed to talk to you all over the world. No goodness of my own because I wake up with sleep in my eyes just like you. I wake up, for some of you all who are my age, your back sometimes get tight and you gotta stretch it. There is nothing supernatural about my abilities, but I have figured something out. And this is what I wanna share with you. God has been able to leverage and scale my life because I recognize something that I want you to grasp. I want you to grab it. When you're looking for success, you have to obey the law. You, you, gotta, you gotta hear me. What do I mean? Not the speed limit, not, not that law. I'm talking about the laws of nature. Nature is the most successful force the earth has ever seen. Not Elon Musk. Not uh, Michael Jordan, not Oprah Winfrey, not M Mark Zuckerberg, not uh, uh, you name it. You, you can name it. Not, not the owners of oil fields in Qatar. The most successful force on the earth that God has ever implanted in this earth, opposite of himself and his son, Jesus Christ, are the laws of nature. The sun and the earth are perfectly situated. Their scientists say just a few miles away, we'd all freeze to death. And a few miles closer, we'd all burn from the heat. It rains from the sky. The heat evaporates the water from the ocean. 
The vapors reach up to the sky, create clouds. The water comes back down. If you go up, you got to come down. And I don't care how much money you have, you're going to obey the laws of gravity. And, and you can have a billion dollar net worth and create a spaceship and you can go into outer space like many of the billionaires are doing in this day and time. And I am grateful for the advancement of their philanthropy and their business acumen. But they got to come back because money cannot buy you out of obedience to laws. So success then cannot be what you've accumulated. Success cannot be what you have. Success is actually, here's the definition, because there are so many definitions out there. I'm getting ready to give you my definition for success. It is not the car you drive. It is not the house you live in. It is not how many bank accounts you have and how many of them exceed the FDIC guarantee. None of that is success. All of that is great, and I want all of that. Like you, I want to drive well, live well, eat well, dress well, look well. I want all of those things. But the older I get and the more I pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding like Solomon did, the more I realize that success is a lot more simple than the things that we have. Success is simply the realization of a predetermined goal. Success is when you see it and then you seize it. You get me? So I see it. Like how many of you all have vision boards? How many of you write the vision and make it plain? Because you got to see it to seize it. Seize it. S-E-I-Z-E. -E. Seize it. You have to see it. S-E-E. -E, to seize it. So when you see it, you will seize it. This is the God's honest truth. There is nothing that I have ever saw that I didn't seize. Good God, help the people. To, I promise you, and I am not any more special than you. Most of you all who are watching me, you are smarter than me. You are more educated than I am. You are more articulate than I am. I use words like ain't. I, I, I don't have a great vocabulary. You got all of that locked up. But I do know what God has done with me. And I can testify to you. There is nothing that I've ever had the faith to see that I haven't seized. Everything that I've ever envisioned has come to pass. Now, here is the bad thing. I should have thought bigger. I only have what I had the faith to see. Now that my faith has been built, I see bigger things. Success is the realization of a predetermined goal. Okay? Now, listen. Again, we have to agree on this if this teaching is going to work for you. You have to agree that there is no force in the earth and I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit because we know that that's God. I'm not talking about when Jesus was here. I'm talking about the laws that we can use to accumulate things. The Bible says he gives us the ideas to create wealth. The Bible says that money answereth all things. And I don't care how good you can pray. You cannot walk into your local electricity company and say, I've been praying for 30 days. I shouldn't have a bill. They sending you a bill whether you're a prayer warrior or a garbage man. It don't matter if you're a billionaire or a hundredaire. You're getting a gas bill if you got gas in your house. That's just the bottom line. And I don't care how anointed you are, your car don't run on faith. It runs on regular, supreme, premium, diesel, natural gas, electricity, whatever you have. I don't care how much faith you have, you're never going to have enough faith for your Tesla to stay charged. So once we get out of the mystical and the spiritual, there is a natural world that we have to live in. And I'm going to show you how to kick the natural world in the teeth and make it bow to you because you're going to obey its laws and its principles. And money's going to come to your hand. Your name is going to be in the marketplace. 
and you're going to be so generous after you've been blessed that you're going to start a cycle where you can never be unblessed again. How about that? How many of y'all want that? All right, let's roll. Here's the first law that you must, you must obey in order to be successful. Write this down. The first law you must obey is the law of agreement. Combative people who find it difficult to find agreement also struggle to be successful. Some of the most opinionated people I know are the brokest I know. Well, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough, but we're going to do it today. I want to share a scripture with you. In fact, uh, team, do me a favor um, as we're looking at this. I want you to put Amos chapter 3, verse 1 through 3 on the screen so that they can see it. Put that up. Because, guys, you got to get this. I, I believe in the scripture. I believe in the Bible. And the first few words of Amos chapter 1, verse 1, is what you have to do in order to get what I'm saying to you today. Hear this word. That's it. <laughs> Hear this word. If you've already blocked it off as it can't happen for me and that's that thing for them, and I don't have the intelligence for that. It didn't say, figure this out. It just said, hear. Just hear this word that the Lord has spoken to you, O children of Israel. Look at verse 2. You only, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquities. Look at verse 3. Listen to this. He said, I don't want to punish you because I hate you. I don't want to punish you because you're black. I don't want to punish you because you're white. I don't want to punish you because you're a single parent. I don't want to punish you because you've been divorced. I don't want to punish you because you got bad spending habits. So, God, why am I going through all of this? Watch what he says. How can two walk together except they agree? God is saying, the reason why you are struggling in areas I can solve is because you and I are struggling to find agreement. And here's the problem. You want me to agree with you, but I'm the one that's perfect. I'm the one that doesn't lie. <laughs> I'm the one that doesn't sleep nor slumber. So why would I agree with your plan when I am the one that created the purpose? I can't walk with you. I can't bless you. I can't leverage you. I can't scale you. I can't push your name out there. I can't make you wealthy. I can't make you rich. I can't make you prosperous until we agree. You have to understand the law of agreement. Write this down. Disagreement. Let me say it this way. I want to say it in the positive because I was getting ready to say it from the negative perspective. Let me say it in the positive. Agreement destroys all of the forces that come up against success. Right as you get ready to scale, to dream, to envision, to prosper, I want you to start to pay attention to how many disagreeable things start to creep up in your life. Marriages fail because of disagreement. Businesses fail because of disagreement. I think about Blockbuster where we used to go, it was almost like going on vacation at our house. We used to go to Blockbuster, and we would look for videos and stuff like that to take home. It was something my mom would do for us, and we would, we would be able to get some candy and some popcorn. We thought that was the bomb. 
And then the world said, we no longer want our media on VHS. Blockbuster said, we disagree. <laughs> Where are they now? Where are they now? The CEO's vision or whoever's in charge of that decision didn't agree with the economy, didn't agree with the shareholders, didn't agree with the customers, and now it dissolves. Why? Because disagreement destroys. What would you do if you told your child right now, uh, John, take the trash out, and he says to you, Mama, I ain't taking it out. I disagree. It's your job. What you going to do? See, disagreement will have your child waking up three days later saying, where am I? Your boss says, your hours are eight to five. And you go to him and say, I disagree. I think I shouldn't have to come in to 12 and leave at three. You will be working somewhere else because disagreement destroys. Agreement destroys all of the forces that come up against success. Even, listen, you can't even have a lot of power in prayer unless you agree. The Bible says that if the two of you will agree on anything, I will give it to you. Matthew 18 and 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I will be in the midst of Sometimes the absence of God in your life is the result of your disagreement with somebody or with something. I'm telling you, if I, if I speak this word to you and you don't agree with what I'm saying, you don't have a right to expect what I said. I can't tell you how many times people came to church and I made a declaration that God was going to do something and then I got a message and say, he didn't do it for me. I always want to ask him, but did you agree with it when I was saying it? Because if you didn't agree with it, if you didn't receive it, if you didn't accept it, then you forfeited the promise, not because I was powerless, but because you were disagreeable. You have to get on the same wavelength, vibe, and page as me right now saying, you know what? If I began to find agreement in my life, I will also find myself discovering advantage. Agreement leads to advantage. The team that has agreement on the court is called chemistry. They win the game. The team that argues, the team that won't share the ball, the team that guns loses the game. Why? Because agreement causes Loss, a, a disagreement, I should say, causes loss. Why? Because disagreement causes loss. I want you to think about that. Disagreement causes loss. You have to get an agreeable spirit. Stop being so combative. I have found out that some people just have a judgmental spirit. They just find it difficult to be. They just find it difficult to accept. The Bible says that God told Pharaoh to let the people go. Pharaoh said, I disagree. God says, okay, you don't have to agree. Deal with these 10 plagues. Then all of a sudden, I'm about to blow your socks off. It almost makes me want to stand up. I want you, the Lord has given me this right now. You, you can go back and check every sermon I've ever had. You will not hear me say this ever because he's given it to me right now. I feel uh, this is what, what we call in theological terms a, a word of knowledge. It's a rhema word. He's giving it to me right now. Pharaoh, God says, let my people go. Pharaoh says, I disagree. I think I should be able to keep them and enslave them. God says, okay. I'm going to turn your water to blood. I'm going to send gnats. I'm going, I'm going to kill your firstborn. I'm going to do everything I can. Ten plagues. You're going to have frogs everywhere. You're going to have locusts eating up your crop. I'm going, okay, here's a hailstorm. Pharaoh says, all right, ten of these is enough. I'm going to let them go. Pharaoh lets them go. 
but his life doesn't improve. Why? He let them go, but he did it with the wrong heart. The Bible says Pharaoh's heart was hard. Listen, stop letting anybody or anything, even you, here it is, stop thinking that just because you obeyed, your heart was right. Stop thinking that because you obeyed, your heart was right. God blesses the heart, which means you can go to a church service and it can be offering time and you can give what the preacher asked for, but not get the blessing that was promised because if you didn't give from the right heart, you were obedient, but you were not in agreement. Just because you obeyed doesn't mean that you get the benefits of agreement. Agreement is a heart thing. You have to create a clean heart. You have to create in me a new spirit and a right spirit. You, you have to be in agreement. Parenting is difficult with two people who don't agree. Are we going to do timeout? Or are we going to do punishment? Do we spank or do we converse? Agreement. When you find out that agreement is one of the fastest ways to being successful, lest it be detrimental, you will even learn to agree with things you disagree with. <laughs> I'm talking to a wife right now who's saying, I don't like the direction that my husband is going in that area, but what if, I'm not talking about trauma, pain, and hurt. I'm talking about things that you can disagree about and still follow his lead and allow the outcome to be the result of what he chose and just be agreeable with something you may be disagreeing with and see the blessing that will come out of being in agreement. I hope I'm making sense. Same thing to you, brother. I know it's your house, and I know that God made you the head and all of that, but, but how hard would it be to just agree with her on something? That you don't have to always usurp your authority. But sometimes you can distribute your agreement. I'm telling you, that's a lot of success in your parenting, your marriage, your life, your business. Just finding how to agree. Number two, if you're going to be successful, you have to master the law of generosity. Stingy people will not be successful. I'm going to say this in the best way I can. I hear Christians talk about multimillionaires who are atheists and billionaires who are agnostic. And you hear Christians all the time talking about how they get that. They don't even believe. Yeah, but they obeyed the law of generosity. And they won't give their money to a church, but they will give it to rebuild a hospital in Uganda. And the law blesses them because whatever a man sows, help me, Holy Ghost, that shall he also reap. The scripture didn't say if a man is a believer and he sows, he will reap. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. An atheist can plant an orange seed and get the same amount of oranges as a Christian because the law doesn't consult with your religious beliefs. A Buddhist can put an apple seed in the ground and get an apple tree and the apple seed won't say, did you worship Jehovah? Because the law doesn't care. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. The most successful force in the world 
we talked about this, is what? Nature created by God. The sky gives the rain. The ocean evaporates, gives it back. Look at this. Look at this exchange. When God created man, he created man out of the dirt. Look at this exchange. When man dies, he reimburses the earth and gives him dirt back. Because we all become dirt when we die. The, the, the earth gives us the dirt. We die. We reimburse the earth and say, here, here's dirt back. Give and it shall be given. Whatever man sows. So the earth sowed dirt. Look at what the earth get back. Dirt. Abundance is the result of generosity, not hard work. Please hear me. Hard work does not guarantee success. Your favorite team worked hard yesterday, but when they are outmatched, they are just outmatched. You can work hard and still lose. The average salary for a blue collar worker, which in my opinion, some of the hardest working people in the world. The average salary for a blue collar worker in America is $40,000. Let's look at this. Some of the hardest working people amongst us. Um, garbage men. They got to get up early in the morning. They got to go through your filth just so that we can have some semblance of cleanliness. Let's look at teachers who have to go to work and deal with children who didn't come to learn, who came with the attitude of disrespect and have no consequences when they get home. Not all of them, but some. Let's look at police officers and first responders and firemen. That's hard work. And yet there's somebody who made more than all of those people today and they didn't get out of bed till one o'clock. There's some tech guy that just typed a code in because he's a genius and made $100,000 today in flip-flops, shorts, and a sweater to approve to be dressed on a Zoom, to appear to be dressed. Because working hard does not guarantee success. Working hard does not guarantee abundance. But generosity oh, guarantees it every time. Because the generous police officer and the generous school teacher and the generous fireman can get blessings that come from a different direction than the compensation associated with the hard work because the law of generosity works harder than you. Oh, I hope you're getting this. Luke 6 and 38 says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Look at that. I could, I could have run over, not because I worked overtime, but because I'm generous. Look at this. I never knew this. But I want to say something to you I think it's going to change your life. I just found out this this week. Give and it shall be given. That entire phrase is actually a Greek word, shall be given, which means, listen to this, to his advantage. Good God, to his advantage. What this means is, is when you give, the laws of nature ensure that everything works to your advantage. Generosity makes sure and demands of the earth that everything works to your advantage. So the law of generosity into more than enough. I never knew that the laws of nature have to make things work to my advantage just because I'm generous. This is blowing my mind. When you are generous, things work to your advantage. So I use this in every way. Like 
If I have an enemy that comes up against me, I don't argue with them. I give an offering. <laughs> because the giving makes the conversation work to my advantage. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. You, you need to stop arguing with people and just give. Find something, someone to be generous about, too. And let me say this, too, as I'm talking about generosity. Most people are only generous to people who are doing worse than them. So you'll be generous to somebody on the street because our heartstrings are always pulled by the struggling family and, and, and the kid in this country and, 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 and this victim and all of that. And we should give all of, to all of that. But you also have to understand that everything you give your money to is actually soil. One of the things that I've discovered in my life, now some of y'all ain't gonna get this blessing because you're gonna disagree. But here's for those who really want mega blessings. When my life changed, is when I started to give large gifts to people who didn't need it. Now there's a blessing in giving to the poor. There's a blessing, the Bible talks about that specifically. But when my life started to change is when I started to give gifts and honor to people who were not in need. Because if everything I give my money to is soil and I give to somebody who doesn't have need, then what I am sowing you got it, is a life that has no need. That is when my life began to change. When God wanted man to choose him as Lord and Savior, what did he do? Gave his only begotten son. Even the master of the world gave in order to receive us. Got to get this, the law of generosity. Are you ready for your next law? If you're going to be successful, you're going to have to learn to respect the law of karma. Oh, karma, karma. You have to respect the law of karma. By definition, the sum of a person's actions in this and previous states of existence viewed as deciding their fate in future existence. That's the definition of karma. Now I know it's a Hindu and a Buddhist term just because it wasn't derived from our religious perspective doesn't mean it doesn't have validity. The Bible did not give a scripture on gravity, but it is there, <laughs> right? So, so you have to understand that there are some truths that are not recorded. The law of karma is actually in your book. It's in your Bible. Yeah, Galatians 6 and 7. It's the law of karma. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever man sows, that shall he also reap. That's karma for you. If you sow disagreement, you're going to reap it. If you sow an argumentative spirit, you're going to continue to connect with argumentative people. If you sow lies, you're going to reap lies. If you sow goodness, goodness will find you. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, according to Psalms 23. James 3 and 18. Those who sow peace reap righteousness. So karma actually says that I will sometimes reap more than I sowed. That's true. I can sow an acorn. I get an oak tree that will give me shade for the rest of my life. Matthew 7 and 12. So in everything, do to others what you would have them to do unto you. For this sums up, here it is, the law of the prophets. 
write this down. If this, if this messes with you and you get an attitude, I don't want you to hang up. I just want you to deal with it. You have no right to expect what you haven't given. Get mad at me all you want. Right here I am. Present my body as a living sacrifice. Because <laughs> you don't have no right. Pardon my ebonic relapse. You do not have a right. No, nah, I like it better. You don't got no right. You ain't got a right to expect what you haven't sown. Go down to the local Bank of America or Chase. Walk in the bank. I want you to take out, I want you to just reach over the counter and grab $5,000 and walk out. They're going to give you 15 years. Why? Because you have no right to take money out of a bank where you haven't deposited it. It is illegal to make withdrawals where you haven't made deposits. And you know what? The same thing goes in life. It is illegal to ask somebody to be your spouse or your friend or a business partner and to keep taking from them without giving to them. How many of y'all feel like you are in illegal relationships? Not just romantic, illegal. You keep depositing, you keep giving, you keep sowing, but you never reap. And let me tell you something about God. God is so good that he will allow you to reap what you have sown, even if you don't reap it from where you sowed it. It's the law of pollination. A bee will come and get pollen from a flower and fly across the street and the flower will grow because of where, what they got across the street. You won't always get it in that relationship. You won't always get it in that church. You won't always get it at that job. But if you sow it, I decree and declare and by the law of the Lord that you're going to get it from somewhere. And this is the law of the prophet. The law of karma says, whatever I give, I'm going to get back. And you can only expect what you have given. Hmm. Fourth law. This is one of my favorite. Ooh, this is this one. Oh man. I almost want to keep this one the next time. I don't even want to give it to you. I ain't gonna give it to you. I'm keeping this one for myself. This is my favorite law. Y'all ready? You can see the smile on my face. Oh, I got chills thinking about it. This is the fourth law you have to follow. The law of least effort. No. Okay. All right. Let me explain this to you. If you master the law of agreement and you master the law of generosity and you understand the law of karma, you will walk into the next law of what I'm calling the law of least effort. This is the season of your life where you're going to start to get the most from doing the least. When your life is filled with good karma and you got generosity on lock and you're not stingy anymore and you're not worried about missing a bill because you were obedient to God and you are mastering the law of agreement and you're checking your attitude, and you're positive no matter what the circumstance is, the amount of effort it's going to take for you to be successful is going to start to decrease. You're going to go to work from working 12 hours a day to working two hours a day and multiplying in the two hours what you couldn't get in the 12. I'm telling you right now, some of you all are going to be millionaires working one day a week. All right. If you don't agree with me, I ain't talking to you, though. But if you agree with me, you're going to get this. Listen to me. You're going to start to see without looking. Help me, Holy Ghost. You're going to start to accomplish without doing. Remember, we talked about nature. Fish don't have to try to swim. They just do. Flowers don't have to just try to bloom. They do. Birds don't have to try to fly. They do. Last I checked, I've never seen a lizard try to grow, go around the wall. They just go over it. Because when you are in your lane, you can achieve success with little effort. You can look at a lizard going up a wall. Try it if you want to and see what happens. 
you ain't got the favor to do that. You will go up and you will fall down. But when you are in your space, in your lane, you will be like the sun and you will shine 24 hours a day. Let me talk about the sun. Even though you don't see the sun 24 hours a day, it's always shining. If it ain't shining in China, it's shining in Nebraska. The sun never goes down. And even when it's not shining in your city, it's night, but it's still day somewhere. And even in the day, there may be clouds blocking it, but the sun is always doing its job on the other side of the cloud. And when you get into the area of life where you are mastering generosity and karma and all of the things that we're talking about today, you're going to have 24 hours of light. You're going to shine every day. You're going to be happy every day. You're going to scale every day. All of your businesses will succeed. You won't have a season. It will always be your season. It will always be your time. It will always be your moment. Even when it's a flood, even when it's a hurricane, even when it's a tornado, even when it's a tsunami, even when it's an earthquake, you will still be 